Does your PC suck? Low FPS, loud cooler, not enough storage? Let's upgrade it. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. Now today we're doing a very requested subject, how to upgrade your PC. We'll cover when you should upgrade your PC versus when you should consider buying or building a new one. And we'll cover each component, including how to upgrade the CPU, how to upgrade the GPU, how to upgrade RAM, SSD, and more. Remember, if you get value out of the video, please give it a like because it really helps out the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. Now, before you consider upgrading, if you feel that your PC's performance has degraded, your issue might just be a buildup of a lot of background programs installed over time, possibly some incorrectly installed or even bugged hardware drivers or other software issues. Now the good news is that it can often be cured with a clean installation of Windows, then limiting what programs you reinstall to only the apps that you absolutely need or want. Now to do this, go to your Windows settings under Recovery and click the Get Started button under Reset This PC. You'll have a choice of keeping your existing files or doing a complete wipe of your boot drive. So choose carefully. Afterwards, you will need to reinstall all of the chipset drivers for the CPU, the graphics card drivers, update the motherboard drivers, and reinstall programs you want. Basically do a brand new system setup, but it can restore a lot of lost performance. So consider this before spending your money on an upgrade. Now we need to decide whether it makes actual sense to upgrade your existing PC or if it's just too old and it makes more financial sense to build or buy a new one. Now for those looking to upgrade primarily to play modern games at good FPS at 1080p or higher resolution, then I would only consider upgrading your current system if you have any AMD Ryzen system with a standard motherboard or eighth generation or newer Intel system that has at least four cores and eight threads or six cores with six threads. If you don't know what your CPU has, type in system information in your Windows search bar, mouse over your CPU name, and under processor, it will tell you how many cores and logical processors, that's the Windows term for threads, that you have. Anything else, it's likely time to build or buy a new PC. So what about those looking to upgrade for professional or creator applications that lean heavily on the CPU, the graphics card, or a mixture of both? Programs like Adobe Premiere, Blender, Code Compilers, and others all have recommended system specifications, and you should check them out to determine if you can get your PC up to those recommendations. Now remember, there's a difference between system requirements, which is typically just the lowest level of hardware the application will absolutely run on, and the system recommendations, which is usually the lowest level of system to actually have a good experience on. Now note here for pre-built PC owners, in order to upgrade, you need to know whether or not you have a PC built with standard off-the-shelf parts like you see here, or a PC built by an original equipment manufacturer, or OEM for short, like Dell, Lenovo, or Acer, because they can include non-standard parts or use limited motherboard BIOSes, which make upgrading certain components very difficult, even impossible. Now, if you have an OEM PC, you will need to do some research to see what's possible to upgrade in your system. And it may just make more sense for you just to buy a new one or build your own. So see our video on the best pre-built gaming PC 2022 video for more on this topic. For gaming, upgrading the graphics card or GPU is usually both the easiest upgrade to make as well as the one that's gonna give you the most FPS. Now, if you're wondering what GPU to upgrade to, you can check out our best GPU for gaming video. And just know that there are new ultra high-end graphics cards that are coming out towards the end of 2022. Remember, if you do wanna upgrade your GPU, you're gonna to wanna to ensure that your power supply will support the new graphics card. Does it provide enough power as recommended by the manufacturer for the graphics card and have enough PCIe power cable connections. If not, you'll need to upgrade your power supply as well. And more on that in the power supply upgrade section. So here's how to upgrade your GPU. To demonstrate, we upgraded a GTX 1660 Super to an RTX 3070, which did require a new power supply. Now first, power off your PC and unplug it. Remove the old GPU if you have one by disconnecting any power supply cables going to it, unscrewing it in the back, and pushing down on the retention bracket lever on the main GPU slot. 
wiggling it a little bit backwards and forwards as you gently but firmly pull upwards, it should come right out. Insert the new GPU the same way. Ensure that the GPU retention lever is pressed down, then insert the GPU into the slot with a slight bias going towards the front of the GPU. Press down firmly but gently until it's seated, then screw it in and connect the PCIe power cables. Note that sometimes the metal slot covers on the back of the GPU can get stuck on the rear slots of the case. So if your graphics card doesn't go in easily, check to make sure that you're not physically stuck on something. Plug in your monitor to the output on the back of the graphics card, power up the PC, and if you get a signal, great. Go ahead, boot into Windows, download and install the graphics card drivers from AMD or Nvidia, depending on your GPU. If you don't get a signal, power off your PC and the power supply and double check that the card and the power cables are correctly seated. Now let's talk about upgrading the CPU. Now the first thing you need to do is see what CPUs are compatible with your existing motherboard. Note that many older Intel and AMD Ryzen CPUs often cost more than the latest models, which have quite a bit more performance. So sometimes you'll want to consider upgrading both the motherboard and the CPU. For Ryzen systems in the 1000 to 4000 generation, your motherboard should be able to utilize up to a Ryzen 5000 CPU with a BIOS update to the motherboard. For Intel owners, 8th and 9th generation CPUs share motherboards, as do 10th and 11th generation CPUs. Check the support page for your motherboard for full compatibility information, and make sure that you update your motherboard BIOS to the correct version that supports your new CPU before removing the old one. In our example, we upgraded a Ryzen 3600X with a B450 motherboard to a Ryzen 5600X CPU, and we replaced the old stock cooler with a budget tower air cooler. Of course, before we swap in a new CPU, we've got to talk about the cooler. Maybe you just want to upgrade a noisy stock cooler with a budget tower air cooler, or add some bling to your system with a nice all-in-one liquid cooler. So with the PC powered off and unplugged, carefully remove your CPU cooler. So you want to unscrew it, then turn it just a tiny bit side to side until you feel the thermal paste loosen up. Now gently lift straight upwards off of the CPU. For Ryzen systems, just be gentle enough that you don't pull out the old CPU with the cooler. Now with the CPU still in its socket, use some isopropyl alcohol with shop towels or paper towels to clean the CPU off and then dry it and then install the new cooler retention brackets using the included instructions. Now, if you're changing out the CPU, then lift the retention bracket and pick up your old CPU. Drop the new one in facing the same way or line up the triangle on the CPU with the socket triangle and then gently drop it in with almost no force applied. Slide the retention bracket down, clean off the old cooler with isopropyl alcohol and dry it off if you intend to reuse it. Apply a pea-sized amount of thermal paste. Now note that if you're using a cooler with pre-applied thermal paste, that's fine instead. Then, screw down the cooler a little bit at a time in a crosswise pattern to give it even mounting pressure. Don't over tighten the cooler as it could damage the CPU. Medium finger pressure on the screwdriver is all you need. Now boot up the PC, jump into the BIOS to ensure everything's working properly, including that XMP or DOCP RAM profiles are enabled. Make sure to download and install the Intel or AMD chipset drivers once you get into Windows for your new CPU. Let's talk about adding RAM because it can either be super easy, barely an inconvenience, or it can be near impossible. If you have a standard parts PC with parts like these, it's likely gonna be much more easy. If you have an OEM PC with limited options in the BIOS, it's gonna be much more difficult. So let's start off with the easy one. For those that own a standard parts PC, it typically just involves buying the right speed and amount of RAM that you want. Now see our best RAM for gaming video for more on this. Note that we never recommend mixing and matching different RAM kits. And it's often cheaper to buy a brand new kit and just remove the old one. Changing RAM out, it's easy. With the system off and unplugged, remove the old RAM by opening the RAM slot. Some motherboards use two clips on either side of the stick, and some just have one clip on one side of the stick with a dummy clip on the other side. Then just pull up with a little bit of a longwise wiggle until the stick comes out. For two sticks, typically slots two and four are used, but double check your motherboard manual to ensure that you're using the correct slots, especially if upgrading from one stick to two. Slide in the sticks, latch up the slots, then power up your PC after plugging it back in, hold down the correct key at startup to get in the BIOS, usually the delete key. Now ensure that the memory is running using XMP or DOCP profiles at the proper speed in the BIOS. Note that clock speed of the memory is half the speed of the RAM itself. So 3200 RAM runs at a clock speed of 1600 megahertz because DDR stands for double data rate. 
Some BIOSes display this as 3200, others will display this as 1600 megahertz. And for non-OEM systems, that's it. For RAM upgrades on OEM systems, other than the HP Omen PCs, I would strongly recommend reaching out to your OEM and simply buying the RAM that they certify as being compatible directly from them. This is because it likely requires JEDEC timings rather than the standard XMP profiles. The upside of this is that it should work and they can help you if it doesn't. The downside is that typically it's very, very expensive. So consider the cost when deciding whether to upgrade or build or buy a new PC. Now the rest of the procedure is very similar. Just consult the manual on which slots to use. Note that newer HP Omen PCs now allow the use of standard XMP memory profiles, so upgrading their RAM is the same as a standard parts PC. Upgrading system storage. Now adding an additional drive is relatively easy. If your motherboard has one or more extra M.2 slots, you can buy an M.2 NVMe SSD. Check out our best SSD for gaming video for more on SATA versus NVMe and the difference between PCIe Gen 3 and PCIe Gen 4 drives and whether spending more for that speed increase is worth it. Just note that before you buy a PCIe Gen 4 drive, it will only run at the faster speed on motherboards and CPUs that support PCIe Gen 4. Otherwise, it's gonna run at the slower PCIe Gen 3 speed. Now, most M.2 NVMe SSDs today are socket 2280 because they are 22 millimeters wide by 80 millimeters in length. So 2280. Other lengths for M.2 drives are 30 millimeters or socket 2230, 42 millimeters or socket 2240, 60 millimeters or socket 2260, and 110 millimeters or, you guessed it, socket 22110. Just make sure that your slot is at least the length of your M.2 SSD. Now our example upgrade is adding three M.2 NVMe SSDs to a Ryzen 5950X monster editing and gaming PC. With your PC turned off and unplugged, make sure to remove any heat sinks or face plates on the motherboard to get the M.2 slot. Make sure the screw standoff is installed in the correct hole. Some newer motherboards have an adhesive thermal pad on the bottom of the socket. So if that's the case, then make sure to remove the plastic film. Then insert the M.2 at about a 45 degree angle and push it in until the connection area is seated into the socket. Then gently swing down the drive and screw it in. Or if your motherboard has a newer turn latch, you can use that. If using a heatsink on top of the drive, just make sure to remove the plastic film from the thermal pad on the heatsink before you secure it in place by latching it to the end of the heatsink and securing it with the screw. Never remove the sticker on the drive itself, especially if not using a heatsink as that sticker is actually intended as a heat spreader across the chips on the drive. Now for those adding in a hard drive or SATA SSD, with the PC turned off and unplugged, you're gonna wanna mount the drive to the case, locate an empty SATA port on your motherboard and run the SATA cable to the drive. Then you're gonna wanna plug in the SATA power cable from the power supply to the drive itself. Note that sometimes it's easier to connect the cables first and then mount the drive afterwards. Once installed, power up your PC, jump into the BIOS and see if it recognizes your drive and make sure the boot order is still to your primary boot drive. If not, change it. In Windows, using the disk management utility by typing that into the search bar until the words create and format hard disk partitions comes up, then click on that. You should be prompted to initialize the disk either using GPT or older MBR formats. And I strongly recommend GPT. Navigate to the new drive and select it by right clicking on it. Right click on the unspecified volume and select create new simple volume and follow the instructions on the volume wizard, naming it whatever you want. And you're done. Now let's go over upgrading the power supply or PSU. Now first, if you aren't sure how to size or buy the best PSU, then definitely make sure to watch our best PSU buying guide 2022 listed down in the video description. With the PC powered off and unplugged, disconnect the existing PSU connections. Note that the PSU connections on the power supply side are proprietary, so modular cables cannot be reused though third-party cable extensions can be reused. Once the old cables are disconnected and loose from any cable management, remove the PSU itself. Then install the new PSU. If it's modular, make sure you connect the cables that you're gonna need before putting it into the case because otherwise it gets super tight in there. 
Then route the new cables back and reconnect everything using whatever cable management needed to get the cables secured and looking as clean as possible. Plug in the PC, turn on the PSU, and press the power button on your PC. And it really should be that easy. So are you planning to upgrade your system? Tell us down in the comments what parts you're considering upgrading and why. If you got value out of the video, please give it a like because it makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Now, if you're looking for how to size and properly buy the right power supply in 2022 and beyond, check out this video right here. We go through how to size it, how to buy the right one, especially for the new GPUs that require tons of power. And we'll catch you on the next one.